Okay, uh, I'll be presenting uh, now, and uh, I believe Ram will collect the, the questions, and after the, the presentation, I'll be answering. I'll try to answer all the questions that you have. Okay? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, Hold it up. Okay. Uh, okay, my name is Felipe. Okay, I'm LabVIEW developer from Brazil. Currently, I'm working at the Itaipu Technological Park. It's in South Brazil. This is a park inside the technological park inside the Itaipu Hydroelectric Power Plant. This is a very big. And our projects are mainly developed in for the electrical industry. So we have another uh, companies in Brazil that we attend. And we work especially in generation, transmission, and distribution sectors. Okay, I've been using LabVIEW for uh, about uh, seven or eight years, and just only this year I became certified LabVIEW architect. As uh, was a great achievement. And today I'm going to show you a bit about this framework. It's not a real framework per se, but uh, I'll comment about that later. But the idea is to show the concepts that I, I, I had about this implementation in something about behind this project to the, the, the theory behind this project, okay? So uh, first, I'll talk about the, the presentation, and then I'll talk about the, this idea, the, of the broker idea, then, I'll say a little bit about the message patterns and the broker concepts. Uh, then I'll talk, uh, introduce this idea of these abstract messages, how the abstract message was used before in the in Nectar framework and now how the interfaces changed that. And, and Lee, finally, I'll talk about the implementation of the, the, this framework and also uh, the future work on this, this, this library, okay? So what is and what is not this presentation? So I explained the concept of the broker, uh, the idea, the, the base of the message pattern and the, the ideas behind it. We should just start using it right away. So uh, probably later we'll have to make another presentation or say, write something in my blog about this, this framework. I'm not going to force you to use this pattern as well. So you feel free to use another uh, similar uh, ideas that we have. We've had using in the, the conference, we have many, many, many presentations about asynchronous messages in this publish, subscribe uh, idea. Maybe you can build your own. It's, I'll show you that's not a very difficult thing to do. And at the end, I'll share uh, an example code that you can download and test by yourself. So uh, now I'm going to talk the origin of the idea. Uh, here we, we uh, have many projects that use Actor Framework. Uh, probably 90% of the projects use uh, Actor Framework and uh, been using it for, I don't know, five, six years. And uh, probably most of the projects that I, uh, I'm working now is, is this Actor Framework. Uh, I'm not going to be advocate of Actor Framework, but uh, it allows uh, design of powerful architecture. So, uh, then using for a long time actor framework, uh, realized we have mainly in the beginning of uh, trying to use actor framework, uh, we uh, design uh, actors with high coupling. So, uh, we have inquirers passing from uh, callers to colleagues to to nested actors, nested, bro uh, nested callers, and everyone this is knowing everyone, and we call here a very big coupling uh, uh, case. And then when I, we decided to 
bring something like this idea of the broker, uh, we focus mainly on code reuse. So uh, this seems obvious, but uh, sometimes when you are in our company, uh, we start uh, developing, designing mainly without soft engineering processes. We start uh, developing uh, very crazy applications without uh, not uh, seeing the future and how the, the, this code can be reused later. Uh, other, other, some concepts that we had to take in, in, in mind when we were developing was uh, that we couldn't avoid the harm in the actor framework to message. I'll talk about that later a, a little bit. Uh, so keeps the hierarchy of caller nested actors. So the messages only goes uh, in two directions, from caller to nested and nested to the caller. Here's an example of uh, how I myself uh, developed sometimes the, 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 the applications in the past. So actor A talk to actor E, actor B to C, actor F. Uh, I'm not saying that this, uh, this is wrong because it's possible to do, but uh, this, is, this is really a mess. And uh, this is really hard to, to understand after it gets very large. So uh, I do not really recommend uh, doing so with the actor framework. So uh, the second example is just a structure that respects actor three. So a uh, caller actor uh, is talking only to the nested deck. So uh, must pass. actor so respect this actor tree framework there are uh, a lot of discussions in the forums about this this why you can do this why you cannot do this uh, in the end of the presentation I'll be probably uh, leaving some links some resources you can research later so uh, here I uh, raised some requirements about this this messaging framework that uh, we are going to show later uh, must be very simple to use. So if you have a minimum actor framework, use because uh, it uses only the basic structures of the, 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 the framework. Uh, interfaces now in LabVIEW 2020 help to achieve this. So before we step abstract methods was a little bit harder to to become simple, but now with the interfaces is very simple. The pattern also must enforce the coupling. So uh, mainly between sibling actors. So if we want to an, an actor, uh, sibling actor talk to each other, uh, they must know only the caller. So then you can uh, reuse code easier. So uh, the possibility of uh, allowing nested brokers. So we have a we will have a main broker that will intermediate messages, and then uh, later you can have uh, nested brokers down the tree in uh, the actor. So uh, any uh, root root actor or caller actor uh, that launch another actors can be also a broker. Yeah, at, at least provide some minimum debugging tool so uh, you can sniff uh, messaging so you can see where the message is coming from, where the message is going from. And they'll talk about this in uh, some slides later. And of course, it wor must work in Windows, uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux RT, mainly because some of our projects are uh, you, for embedded uh, systems, and so com compact reels and PXI. So it's very important to work on this platform. 
I'll talk about this some message patterns. Uh, I believe this is very discussed along this conference, but I'll try to be very uh, fast about this. Uh, type of uh, message pattern, which is the asynchronous message. So uh, the traditional idea of the actor framework is using this asynchronous message. Uh, all the, 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 the framework was uh, designed towards this pattern. So uh, an actor sends a message to another actor and is in the do uh, method is executed by another actor. Uh, it works idea. This idea works very well with different parallel tasking. So any other, any task doesn't depend on each other, uh, not directly, but provides good response. So you will, the actor will always be ready for new message handling. So if you have a, a task that uh, takes more time than you need, then probably you'll have to use uh, some other, other structures in like helper loops in actor core. Uh, the second one is, is the is a synchronous synchronous message. Uh, the messages we wait for a response. So in actor frameworks is not really recommended and I believe not in other frameworks as well uh, because the actors can hang if the response doesn't arrive. Of course they have you can set timeouts but this is another thing that you should worry when designing. Uh, this is also called blocking communication because the one actor is uh, expecting the, the response from another actor. In, in actor framework, you can use with the reply message. So uh, there is a, a message you can use to implement this type of uh, messaging. Although this is not recommended, uh, you can do it. Um, and if you want to use a synchronous uh, reply message, you can use a self added part of a callback message and you can send uh, some I address and information to your actor response later as we've seen uh, previous presentations. So uh, what is exactly a broker? Uh, a broker is, is a message distribution system. So this is responsible for uh, intermediating the message. You can call the relay. Uh, the messages come from uh, uh, the, the colleagues, so the broker, uh, redirect the message when the these uh, subscribers or publishers want this message. So uh, it's type the type of a synchronous uh, concept. It's uh, published uh, in subscribe. So uh, when you, someone wants to send a message, uh, it publishes this message. If someone wants to re receive any type of message must subscribe that kind of message. The same thing uh, works for uh, works for the 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 publish. It informs the broker the type of message, so the broker will look for any other module that wants to receive the type sent to them. Uh, this reason. Uh, it provides also loose coping. So the models that depend on the data and not on other models. So the kind of the, the data must be uh, a constant between these models. It's widely used in the internet, not uh, internet protocols, IMQP, Kafka, and among others, there are a lot of protocols that use this kind of a uh, a pattern, and you can uh, classify as two types of message filtering. You can uh, use topic, so uh, the message has a topic or a name that identifies 
this message and where it should go. It could be by content. So uh, the message is redirected uh, considering its content. So in this case, uh, LabVIEW class. And uh, the, the broker decides who wants to receive this, this type of message based on its content. And at last, uh, this could be the both. Could work with topic and also with content. This broker considering this both type of uh, message filtering. Uh, now, uh, I'll talk about a little use case for the broker concept. Uh, actually, so subscribe for a, a topic content in the broker. So here you have this uh, simulation of an actor tree. So uh, actor B sends this message to broker. The broker checks inside its internal state which actor should receive, and that it, it, it decides that actor A should receive this message. So it sends the message to actor A. Um, let's talk about a bit of the abstract messages. I'll talk very briefly because uh, since LabVIEW 2020, uh, it's being replaced by interfaces. This was until 2019, the standard way of decoupling actors. So um, it was also my first implementation of my broker. Then uh, later I, I changed to interfaces. Uh, this type of, uh, of messaging use uh, a common abstract message class. So uh, can be the message actor framework, actor framework message class itself or uh, common abstract message, uh, a child of it. Uh, you can, when in runtime, you use a message class to a child to, to pass through the actor. So you can load the, dynamically these this classes and only in runtime you know which class will be implemented. So uh, a standard way of doing it is uh, saving a, a message to the actor private data, passing in runtime, passing another message to this uh, actor. And when executing this, this a method, you you read this this runtime class and send the message using the enqvi method. There are plenty of other methods to, to, to do it, but in, in summary, that's how you can do it. Now, in LabVIEW 2020, we, you start using interfaces. So, uh, simplify that drastically the decoded messaging pattern. So, this is a statement that's using the example of LabVIEW, probably was written by Stephen but I'm not sure. Uh, so this technique completely replaced the abstract message pattern used in LabVIEW 2019 and earlier. Uh, I updated then my implementation of my broker. Uh, the receiver now, this is not a, a, a child of the abstract message, is so this is a child of an interface. So this is uh, an example of LabVIEW. So you have a, a class, a message class uh, with the send and do method, and also the an abstraction class, which is in an interface that has a receive value method. You, in your uh, target class, you inherit from this interface. You override this receive value method. And now every time you you have you your enqueuer is used to send a receive value message, your actor will execute this receive value in, in his uh, method. There is also a, a use 
uh, a forum conversation that we had, uh, Stephen and I, and uh, I was we, thought, we were talking about this uh, messaging interfaces and uh, uh, how can you better use this uh, abstract messages. And he said, Ah, Felipe, you're going to love LaVille 2020. And he was right. Uh, I read the examples, implemented all the interfaces in one of my projects, and the amount of code message classes was reduced. It was for from 10 message class to one or two only. The implementation of the uh, the broker uses the this abstract message with interface. So uh, any class uh, that wants to receive a message. Uh, using uh, abstract message. So uh, the subscriber to by this method. So uh, now you can uh, use this uh, abstract abstract class. You should uh, override this abstract message. So the subscriber in the end depends only on the message transport. So uh, I'm showing here is just uh, independence uh, dependency version. So the subscribe uh, must uh, override this here and depends only on the message transport. The publisher, uh, the publisher uses the, the send message from the message transport. You can set a topic, so uh, optional with classes as payload, and send a payload as, as variant. So if you're using content type of uh, sending message, you can you don't need, don't need to use topic. So you send a payload. Uh, so the publisher only needs to know this. Uh, VI to send uh, the the message. Again, the this dependency version, uh, the publisher depends only on the message transport. Uh, the broker, uh, the broker is the main library of this this framework. The broker is a parent class. Uh, any actor that is acting as a broker uh, must inherit from this parent class. Uh, nested broker uh, may also inherit from this uh, class to implement the centralized broker. So if you have, if you need more brokers along the tree, you can use uh, this. The broker has uh, two data, a topic and a content map. So you can, uh, in these maps, they have, they are separate classes. They handle with the subscription writing to the maps and uh, reading from the maps. And other actors have no relation to the broker class. So uh, here, uh, there's a good thing about this, and what provides high decoupling, that other actors have no relation to the broker class. Uh, this, this broker also runs the logic in the message forward using uh, two uh, maps, so these two maps, the topic map and the content map that are used for uh, relaying the messages. Uh, again, the dependence uh, tree, so the broker depends only on the message transport and on the, on the subscription interface, which we all talk now. Okay. The subscription library is mandatory for brokers. Uh, the brokers uses uh, to subscribe or unsubscribe from topic or content. This is, they have basic uh, functions for this. This is also an interface. It's optional for other actors. So it's a special use case where actors can subscribe or unsubscribe uh, on the fly. Uh, so uh, if you want to unsubscribe uh, during runtime, you can use this uh, subscription library. And again, the dependence tree subscription interface doesn't depend on anyone, just on actor framework itself and all the libraries that comes with LabVIEW. Implementation of uh, a topic class, this is 
just a simple class that encapsulates a string. Uh, there is a VIM for, for writing a topic to accept a string or enum. In the end, convert all to a string. So it's better for, uh, for dealing later. And enums, I encourage for uh, better uh, use and avoid mistyping. So uh, my projects, I use some enums for, uh, for this. There is also uh, a dependence tree. So the broker depends on this tree, the message transport, and publisher also depends on the message transport, and subscriber depends on the message transport. So subscriber doesn't depend on the publisher, and the publisher doesn't depend on the broker. Uh, there is not uh, directly storing the enqueuers. So uh, aside the, the, the broker itself that stores uh, unnamed enqueuers, there is no uh, relation with the name of the class that the enqueuers belong. Uh, none of the actors need to store the enqueuers. So all you need this is using these two functions. This is with the caller enqueuer and read selfie enqueuer for uh, sending message. So self for sending for itself, of course, and a caller to send to the broker caller. This helps because uh, the subscriber and the publisher can be tested uh, with, with any other class, not necessarily a broker, but you can use any other class to test uh, the sending and receiving of a uh, message. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, use case one. Uh, subscribes to uh, uh, subscriber wants to receive information about topic. It subscribes to a topic using uh, during the launch or during uh, runtime using the send method. The same applies for a subscribe. The second use case is the publisher send a message uh, with the name topic that was a public, the subscriber has uh, subscribed before sends a, a, a array of data. The broker looks in the map and forwards the message to the subscriber, where in the receive message transport method, he converts to use. The both of them must agree on the data type only and not uh, actually uh, on the caller or the, the other actor. A subscribe, uh, use case two, a subscribe wants to receive Content. Uh, in this case, uh, the content must be a LabVIEW class to use. Subscribe the content uh, using uh, during launch. Caller subscribes it during uh, any of its tasks. Uh, in this case, no topic in now, which is uh, only uh, this class. And the send method, uh, the content class. So you can uh, use the send subscribe as well. Instead of passing a topic, you pass this lab view class, and this will be saved in the content map. The same applies also for unsubscribing. You can use the same uh, uh, data to unsubscribe from a method. Uh, now the publisher sends a message with the content. In this case, a lab view class. The broker looks at the map and forwards the message for the subscriber. That in this case. Uh, Converts to a log view class and uh, reads the name for the knows that this is a content the content class and executes any of its methods. Uh, you can use dynamic dispatch for this, but uh, there are a lot of use cases. Uh, you can just read the name of the class for receiving a content. Again, the data. Must, uh, they both must agree on the data type. Uh, this is use, very useful for me in a log class where I can have a property class, a log with many properties, and I can send to my logger only sending uh, this type of log class, and the log, logger will receive and log to a file or log to a console. Uh, some considerations, the subscriber doesn't know about the publisher, although they must agree on the data type, as I told before. 
Uh, the publishers of Discovery don't, don't know about the broker. They only know about the caller. The publisher and subscribe depends only on the abstraction. Broker most of, uh, most of the times know about the police. Of course, they need to launch the NS adapters, but you can use runtime injection to change this and decouple even more your actors. In the end, tops can be used as a private data. Uh, when you need to pass a topic and you don't know, you don't need uh, your call, uh, nested actor to know the, the private data, you can uh, use uh, this topic as private data. I'm back. Yep, yeah, back. Uh, you see, okay. Uh, you missed not not very much, okay. Oh, well, if you want to download this repository, you can use the GitLab, my GitLab, to download these three libraries. With these three libraries, you can do everything. I just told you before, uh, you can get there, hit, and download these three libraries from my repository. Uh, future work, I definitely need to do some scripting to make my life easier. And of course, work more uh, on documentation. And my debugging tool also needs to improve. Also have some uh, resources links here for everyone to want to know about actor framework. There's a Stephen uh, guide for basic GPPL plugins. Uh, Tom McKellen's also visual tutorials, the actor framework in LabVIEW Wiki, and many other uh, links you want to need to know about the messaging and publish subscribe. Any questions, I'll try to answer right now during the session, and maybe you can go to the breakout room and later to continue the discussions.